Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about growing citrus and other tropical fruits outdoors. And I don't mean in pots, I'm talking about in the ground. This is my uh, lime tree, it's a Persian lime that I picked up in Texas about three to four years ago. And most of you that have been watching know that I'm in Michigan. And this is not an ideal place to grow citrus unless they're in a pot. Now, uh, most of the citrus grown in the United States is grown in California, Arizona, Texas, and of course Florida. And the ideal hardiness zone for citrus is 9 to 11, which means that the temperatures in those areas rarely drop below 30 degrees. They can get a little bit lower, but not most of the time. Now, whereas I'm in zone 5, and we can get temperatures down as low as 20 below zero Fahrenheit. And uh, if you have a citrus tree down in the low 20s for 30 minutes or more, you're going to start to get damaged. So today is the first video of a whole series on how to grow them successfully outside. Now, obviously, this is an experiment. But if it works, I'm going to uh, increase the number of plants that I grow. For instance, back here, I have a bacon and a, a Haas avocado that I bought in from California. Uh, I have over here on the table a um, Eureka lemon. And I have, I've been growing pineapples for years here and I have been able to get full-size pineapples and I'll explain that in a different video. So um, I plan on also planting a tangelo which I have on my front deck and um, maybe mango and probably some grapes that would not be hardy here in Michigan. So you might ask, why don't you just keep them in containers, dude, and not go through all this trouble of trying to grow something where it's not supposed to grow? Well, the first thing is weight. If you look at this particular uh, tree here, it's in a pot that's probably two feet across, and it's extremely heavy. And what I have to do is move this thing in, usually late September, early October, before we get those cold temperatures, and then it has to grow inside under lights until around late May, early June, when I can move it back outside. Then I have to get it accustomed to direct sunlight, which means I have to put it in a shadier place for about a week or two. Otherwise, I'll end up having uh, sunburn on the leaves, which you can see on uh, the lemon to a certain extent. Another thing, I don't have a lot of space. I mean, I have a pretty good sized basement, but I don't want to dedicate the whole thing to plants that are going to get bigger and heavier all the time. And plus the fact that the amount of fruit that I can have on a small potted plant is not as much as I could on a larger tree. And the quality is not going to be the same either because growing something under artificial lights is not the same as the sun. So that's why I'm going to try this experiment outside. Plus the fact, being a horticulturist, I like to push the boundaries and, and I think it'll be entertaining videos. So we'll see how it works out. Now, I was going to try this experiment on my new tangelo. It's a much smaller tree, but I thought, you know, this thing is getting really heavy and uh, it'll be great motivation if I put it outside because I have an investment of three to four years in this tree and so I'm going to do everything I can to keep it alive. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the site. Now, citrus likes to grow in sandy loams, well-drained soils. No problem. On the north side of my property is fairly sandy soil and it's very well drained. It doesn't hold water, no water puddles over here or anything, so check one. Second, it likes a pH, or that's the measure of the acidity or alkalinity of the soil. It likes a pH of six to seven, which is about what most plants like. They like to be slightly acidic. No problem there. Now, if you don't know what the pH of your soil is, you can simply run a soil test with your local university extension service, and that can solve your problem right there, finding out what your pH is. Now, light, we need a minimum of 8 to 12 hours of direct sunlight to grow citrus. And uh, during the summer months, that's not going to be a problem at all here in Michigan. Now, during the winter months, the sun is much lower on the horizon than it is uh, as we go closer to the equator. And on the south side of these trees will be my garage, so there will be some shading there. But I do have the ability to give them some artificial light. We'll see how that works out. Okay, now we need to talk about the planting hole, and this is going to be a little different than what we would traditionally do uh, for a plant. First of all, <clears throat> I dug a hole that was about four feet by four feet by four feet. I'm essentially going to make an in-ground pot, and that's 64 cubic feet of soil, and that's more than enough to supply uh, that tree during the life of its growth. This, this is a dwarf citrus also. Now, um, I wanna explain something a little bit we're going to delve into a little bit of science. 
There are a number of different ways that you can have heat transfer, and you'll see why that's important in a minute. I have a bottle of water here, and if I spray this on my skin, especially on a windy day, my skin is going to feel cooler. The reason for that is, is as the wind blows across the surface of my skin, it draws heat away as the water evaporates. That's called convection. Okay? Now, I have a nail here in my pocket, and if I were to stick this nail in the, on the burner uh, on my stove in the kitchen, what will happen is heat will travel up this nail and eventually burn my finger if I don't have some kind of protection on my finger. This is called conduction. That's another way of transferring heat from one location to another. Now, what I'm going to do in my planting hole is I'm going to put two inch construction insulation. And what that will do is be an insulator between the soil inside this greenhouse that I'm going to have to build and the soil outside, like during the winter when there's snow on the ground. If I just had continuous soil with no insulation, the heat would migrate out into the colder area. So I'm putting two inch insulation in on the sides and on the bottom of the pot. And also on the bottom of the pot, I have drilled holes, or I should say in the hole, I've drilled holes in the insulation so water can filter out. Now, I'm not too concerned about it because it's not a sealed pot anyway, but I did that for uh, extra effect. And then um, after I put the insulation in, then as I fill the hole in, I will eventually put in some drainage tile in kind of a, a bow shape which will allow me to put some fans connected to that and I can circulate the warm air from the greenhouse into the soil if need be. Now I will monitor the soil temperatures at about 6 inches, 12 inches and maybe 18 inches just to be sure that the soil is warm enough for my citrus trees. What I'm going to try to do is duplicate the ideal growing conditions for citrus as much as I can and we'll talk more about that in other videos. So once the hole is dug, I'm adding the soil in. I'm putting the soil that came out of the bottom first. I have added some organic matter, some kitchen waste, and I have some potting soil that, that I'm going to add to the soil too. And I will water it as I fill it in so that the tree's um, quite watered. Now, you'll also notice over here I have a piece of wood across one side of the hole. That is to protect the insulation because with dragging heavy weights across it, it could break the insulation very easily. And then the other thing, since this is a one-man operation and a very heavy pot, I'm going to take a piece of wood and slide it or put it on a, an angle so that I can slide the pot into the hole where I want it. And I'll build the soil up toward the middle so that the pot is about where it needs to be at soil level. And I will plant that tree a little bit above the, the grade and then I'll fill the soil in. Now another thing I need to do is get that pot off of there. So I'm going to use my chainsaw to cut the sides and try to cut part of the bottom so that once the tree is in the ground, I can just peel off the pot. Once that's done, if there are any roots growing around in circles, I will cut some of those roots and spread them out, and then I can finish filling in the hole, watering as I go. Once that's done, I put on some mulch that we control weeds, and then I'm ready to go in terms of the next uh, part of this experiment. Now, you heard me mention a, a greenhouse. Um, <clears throat> We will start getting cold weather around October, maybe even September, depending on how the wind goes, or the wind, the weather goes. And so I have until that time to build a greenhouse. And this greenhouse is going to be an inexpensive one. Um, the idea of this hobby is to keep the cost down, and I will give you some information on some of these costs as I go along. And um, <clears throat> if I don't do that, of course, I'm going to lose the tree. And I'll show you how this is done. But the idea of the greenhouse is it will be completely collapsible, if you will. I'll be able to take it apart during the summer, and the tree will grow in the yard like any other tree. And then during the cold months, I'll put the greenhouse around it. We'll see how that works out. Now, there are a number of additional problems that I'm going to have to work out. For instance, how am I going to heat this economically? Um, I have to be able to water. Uh, watering during the summer is not hard, but I have to be able to water during the cold months also. And then I have to trick the plant into flowering when I want it to. For instance, tangelos are ripe in Florida in January. And we normally order citrus from those um, orchards and it's just delicious. I just absolutely love it. But we can't have tangelos ripening 
in January in Michigan because you're, they're just not going to be the same. So what I need to do is trick the plant into flowering and producing at a time when our weather is analogous to the weather when the citrus is ripening in Florida. Now some of you might say, uh, it's not going to work. Well, that's the experiment and I'll explain how these things work a little bit later. And then I have to think about pollination. Some of the plants do not need a pollinator and other plants do. So I'll have to have more than one in some cases. Now this lime does not, it's, it's self-pollinated. Also I have to have something to pollinate the flowers. If we have uh, plants with flowers out at a time when our pollinators are not working, like during the winter months, then I have to solve that problem too. And then there are possible pest issues and various other things that I have to work out. So, I hope you stay tuned and uh, we're going to uh, see if this works. If nothing else, I'm going to have fun because I've been thinking about it for quite a while. So let's get over here and start planting the tree.